It was a promising start for the Huskers, but a frustrating result in the Cap One Bowl. I'm Jimmy Shield, joined by arguably the greatest homecoming king in Florida high school you history. Right. Tommy, the single biggest frustrating thing from that 30 to 13 loss. Um, getting away from the game plan. And I felt they, and for, for some reason all year, they, the things they do well early, they get away from and try to do something totally different and just ruin the whole momentum of the game. And, and I felt that them getting away from the, the, the running scheme they had in the first quarter, the first half, mm -hmm. really hurt them in the second half. Yeah, I think it was something that maybe was more noticeable this game because they actually had one of their more productive in terms of yards right. in the first half with two scoring drives in mm -hmm. the first quarter, two basically real good drives that ended with red zone turnovers in the second quarter, and then that long drive to right. start the second half. Um, but you're exactly right. I think Coach Beck again, almost reminiscent of Wisconsin, um, panicked when they went down two scores for the first time, I think, with 13 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Right, and, 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 I, and I think the problem is that he did not, he should, I don't think, he, I feel he shouldn't have panicked because the defense is playing well. You know, they, um, South Carolina was moving the ball, but it wasn't like they were moving the ball up and down the field. Mm -hmm. And, and they just stuck the game plan and, and made it just, well, let's go down and get points, go down and get points. We're going to get back in this. But once they got, once he got away from his game plan, it put the defense in, in difficult positions because now they're back on the field, and you can just tell late in that game they started wearing down. And that, that's that been the, the trouble spot for this team this year when, when, when the defense doesn't play well. It's because they play too many minutes. Momentum is, you know what, playing football and coaching a little bit, such a big thing. And that was an even contest through three quarters for the most part. And maybe, I would say, you know, Nebraska probably outplayed them when you figure mm -hmm. um, nine points – for South Carolina came on. Now, breaks happen. That's breaks, part of the game. Okay, breaks happen. Short, Nebraska missed a short field goal. Right. Uh, South Carolina missed a short field goal. Those are more breaks, but even but this was kind of fluky, a Hail Mary. I've been watching Husker football for, you know, ever since I, 1970. I wasn't watching it then. Right. But that was the first Hail Mary I've seen completed. And that was the first two point conversion I've seen. Or Nebraska missed one, and it happened in the same half. Yeah, and those are the breaks, and you have to handle the, it. Those, that's the thing about it. When, when those guys were called on to make a play, they made it. Mm -hmm. We were called on to make a play. We didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And the and perfect, perfect example of that was, uh, I think it was a third and 12, third down 12, and Martinez hit Marlowe in the hands in the middle of the field. If he catches it, he's still running, but he drops it. Mm -hmm. You know, So South Carolina took advantage of their opportunities, and they made plays when they needed them, and mm -hmm. we didn't. No, and, I, I agree and, that, that. and that hurt and that hurt us. You know, so I'm not gonna say that 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 we didn't have our chances. South Carolina wasn't a game buster football team, mm -hmm. but they took advantage of the opportunities that they, that they had and they made plays when they needed. Hail Mary. Every team practiced that play. Mm -hmm. Nebraska practiced it. The bottom the bottom line was they made it work. Mm -hmm. We did. You know, mm -hmm. so this that was the second time this year that I saw that play work. Mm -hmm. Wisconsin versus um, or yeah, it's Michigan gonna State. a couple times. It happens. happens, but then when you have a guy who's six four, and then you have deep defensive backs who are only five nine, five ten, six mm -hmm. one, good chance that play might happen. Yeah. And, and they, they made a good play. And you talk about making the most of your opportunities on that two point, um, the other way conversion or double extra point, as Kent Pavelka might have screamed back in the uh -huh. back in the day. <laughs> um, Stanley Jean Bat or no the. The North, the uh, South Carolina safety had it pop up, and as you mentioned, he made a play. He made a play, and yeah. what, what made a play though was the guy. They looked at Nebraska's tape and saw that the weak link, and that's when it, it, it came through. The defensive mm -hmm. line blocked, it, and that's where you block, scoop, and score. Mm -hmm. and, I th and I think right there, if you take that away from it, it'll be a different outcome. Even with the hail mary in the, at the um, at the end of the half, I think Nebraska still goes in leading. Yeah. With that, I still like the way Nebraska responded to the, like as I mentioned a little bit earlier, through three quarters, even with the breaks of the game going against them, they still hung in there. After right. the right. two points the other way, Nebraska went down, scored their second touchdown. Right. So, I mean, we know it started, okay, what kind of things you mentioned they were doing some things well in the first half? Well, I thought, I thought they were mixing up the run game. Instead of them trying to run sideline to sideline, they would run more downhill. And versus and we and versus South Carolina, we we knew that their front four was there was might be pro material. 
Yeah. All four of those guys might be playing in the NFL. Definitely the ends. And and, and and so and so they ran the ball, laughed them, and gained and moved the ball. But then they started trying to do that side to side stuff, run the option. Well, this is a team that you that you can't really run the option mm-hmm. again because they're too fast. It's a, it's a SEC defense, mm-hmm. which is built on speed and being physical. Mm-hmm. And and we try to do too much stuff sideline to sideline instead of going north and south. And, and that's what got us in trouble in the, in the second half. You're watching Tommy Frazier's X's and O's, and you're, you're speaking about SEC defenses, and you know a little something about a little, a little bit, a little but bit. But you guys were so much more honed in and efficient at the option. And while you know most of the time it didn't end well, Taylor actually had a couple nice runs on their side of the field to get down inside the five, but it's still too far and few in between. Right. I mean, he he his he, he got better running the ball, making plays with his with his legs. But he didn't. He didn't do it enough. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt that he he got a little nervous in that pocket because he saw the, the pass rush. And the one thing that I think that he has to learn that he has to learn. You don't need to just take off and run. Learn how to slide in the pocket, mm-hmm. move up, step back, go around. And and if he would have done that a little bit more, he probably could have had some bigger plays downfield because guys were running open. Yeah, especially late in the the game when, unfortunately, as you mentioned, Coach Beck pant Coach Beck panicked because you know they're down two scores right and they drop back to pass three straight times three straight sacks and 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 well, that's not that's not taylor it was like the oklahoma the, game it, last it, year it was the oklahoma game it was the wisconsin game it was uh, the michigan game to where you just okay let's we got we got to move the ball fast so let's drop it and throw well Ooh, that's the not change. that's not the strength of this offense mm-hmm. to drop it back and throw and taylor best pass plays came off play action mm-hmm and the only way play action works if you're running the ball downhill. And they got away from that. In the first half, they ran the play action. I mean, they hit a long pass down the middle of the field. Run game was working. Play action worked. They moved the ball. But once they got away from their power run again, the downhill run again, the whole offense went downhill. Yeah, and Rex, again, was very good. He didn't break the big runs, but that's not necessarily – the offense can still, while limited, it can still be successful as it keeps the defense honest. And Rex – had about ninety some yards on twenty carries, so he was right. he was getting his chunks, and they were moving the chains, and they're t- they were down only ten points. So that's right. you had twelve minutes to make it up. You need one touchdown and a field goal. Right, you still need two, two scores, no matter two, what. Yeah, one can be a field goal. You just need to move the chains. Right, and with Rex as the focal point, or even Taylor running that option, which you know he was still getting yards, and you know maybe it, you felt like a turnover was coming, that it's still been successful. Not. Dropping back to pass. Exactly. And, and, and letting them pin their ears back. And, 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 and I know everyone's hard on Beck because they think he panicked. Well, we still got to learn this is still his first year as being an actual play caller. So he had he, he, he went through some growing pains too, and he's learning just like everyone else is doing. Mm-hmm. You know, but the thing is, how does he, we always say people get better from year one to year two. Mm-hmm. How much does job. he improve as a play caller next year? It, it's going to be the question. You know, the changing the offense, changing the schemes, changing, focusing on, on, on the quarterback, fine. But how do you make it better next year? You know what you have. You know where you You know his strengths are. He's not, Taylor's not going to get better <laughs> at the things that he doesn't do well now. Yeah. It's just proven fact that he's been playing quarterback how long and he's still doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we know that. So what are you going to do to make sure that you, you enhance or improve his, his strengths that he can do? You what know? do you think? Well, I think, I think what they need to do. My personal opinion is stick more with the, the what Michigan does with Denard Robinson. Mm-hmm. You know that that zone read stuff. Mm-hmm. Getting out, Denard doesn't drop back and throw the ball. Quite He's a better time. scrambler too. Denard's so. Much I better think Taylor can be that way if he learns how to move within the pocket. If he learns, can you do that as a junior in college? I think I, I think once you've learned how, your protections, uh-huh. how to go, how to go, yeah. and trust your protection, you can't. Mm-hmm. And you feel it. I think he's so focused on guys. And, being hit in the pocket to where mm-hmm. he he's antsy, he's nervous that he he, he drops, he folds, mm-hmm. he crumbles. Mm-hmm. You can you can learn how to become a pocket pass or aware of, of, of protections. Mm-hmm. That's one thing that that all quarterbacks do. That you learn who okay, who are my strong protection protectors? Who do I have to mm-hmm. worry about? Now I know that this guy is a little bit weak. So now that I know that I have this much, but I, you can already start sliding because you know the other yeah. side is going to protect you. That's right. the one thing. That's the one thing. If you look at at Coach Osborne's offense. We weren't drawback passers, but we knew that who we, we knew that our offensive line was going to protect us. And we who were knew, the guys that you leaned on a little bit more in the back of your mind when you were dropping back to pass? I think I think I leaned a lot a lot on on, on Zach Weger, Zach Weger and, and Rob Zach as the tackles because I, when you when you, I can't you can see him, but 
you can see stuff coming around you because you're already looking downfield, but mm -hmm. stuff from the, from the angle, you have to feel it. Mm -hmm. And I had no confidence in those guys to know that I don't have to worry about a guy that's going to hit me from behind. I think yeah, they, I they, got time. They, they, I have time. Most of the pressure might come up from the middle. Well, guess what? It did. And my senior year, we weren't sacked at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because, because I understood protection, I understood where the pressure can come from or, and how to slide. You can teach that. He, he can learn that. Now, being a drop a pocket passer, I don't think I don't think he feels comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and this also that's something that's something they need to work. Okay, if, if play action is, is their strength, is his strength, and where they gain most of their yards, then focus on that. Mm -hmm. Wisconsin does a great job at it. They're not just a drop back team. You see them run their power game and a lot of play action stuff, handballs down the field. That's what they need to do. So we can kind of, with Coach Beck, you can kind of focus on the first two and a half to three quarters when he mixed things up or when he kind of, you know, reverted back to, um, right. you know, it just was so reminiscent of Oklahoma and so frustrating. But I think people need to, you know, qualify it that, hey, this was a, a top 10 defense and they were successful for the first three quarters when they knew their limitations and, 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 and I wouldn't expect for Nebraska to go in and score 28, 20, or 35 points. They must have had a halftime if they would have I understand, executed, but, but yeah. you, you come into a, a game to where this team only gave up 13 points a game. Mm -hmm. In the SEC, when there's when there's a lot better offenses in there. Not more power. But not more power. And they, they gave up an average of 13 points. Mm -hmm. You know, so this this wasn't a cupcake defense that we were mm -hmm. facing. And once it, it went to which offense can move the ball better on the other team's defense? Because we both all agreed that the defenses were going to this game were the were the focal points, were the best part of each team versus the other team's offense. And they moved the ball better on our defense than we did on theirs. And that's why they won the football game. Well what did you think overall kind of the some the good thing and bad thing in sophomore defense in the cap one board? Well I, I I felt that that once again spread offense with a quarterback who can move hurts hurts us. Um I felt that we were hurting on the defensive line and, and people don't want to see that say that. But there's a lot of run plays that happen that you're like, really? How how can we have that big of a hole in there? Mm -hmm. Two, we didn't get we didn't get any pass rush without having the blitz. And even when we did blitz, we didn't get much pressure on. There were some sacks, but those were more coverage sacks. There were more cover sacks yeah. than, than than pressure sacks. Mm -hmm. And so I think I think we're gonna have to upgrade our defensive line to where we get guys, I mean big three hundred and twenty five pound guys who can push the pocket. And guys off the end who can push the pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's the one thing South Carolina had. Those guys are big enough to push the pocket fast mm -hmm. enough, but also play the run. We don't have guys like that. Mm -hmm. And I so think I, you said Mandinga Warriors. You said Mandinga Warriors. <laughs> that's, that's what my, that's what my, my buddy, the old defense line coach, used to always say. <laughs> he you, saw roots. We, we better go get some Mandingos <laughs> and play in the trenches here. And, 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 and that's that's what we need. Mm -hmm. And right now, I think we, uh, we have one or two guys, we don't have enough of them. Mm -hmm. And because. You can you can you can you can take one out mm -hmm. out of the game and then know that this guy I'm getting pressure. Is that some scheme though a little bit with the bend out break or it's bending more than it should? I think it's bending more than it should, mm -hmm. but we still don't have that push like we did a couple years ago mm -hmm. with Crick and Silver in there together. When both those guys pushed pushed and that that made the job easier yeah. for the defensive ends because now you got three guys trying to block two. Now those guys one on one. But when you can block two guys with two guys and, and hit up, you got one guy rolling back and forth, and you still aren't getting the pressure. Because there was times where, where the quarterback from South Carolina just sat there and said, okay, who's coming open? Yeah. He really didn't have to move. And you know, so I think on defense, we got to get more pressure from the front four. Linebackers were going to be hurting there, but we, we knew that from the start. Mm -hmm. And secondary, we're, we're young, but I really don't see anyone who can fill in next year to take over for dinner. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Because yeah, you, you want to think it's Evans, but he we saw him get beat too many times as a slot guy. He started as a corner, the season mm -hmm. as a corner, then he lost his job. Andrew Green, he he, he gets burnt quite a bit. I he mean, might so, be the best of the bunch. And he might be the best of the bunch, yeah, but if he's the best not... of the bunch based off on the way they played this year, mm -hmm. we're going to be hurting in the secondary. So we got to find some – and junior college route might be the way to do it. Go find guys who can step in right away and make a presence. Mm -hmm. Offense, we, we, we need – to get back to what was successful. And early in the season, everyone didn't know what our identity was. And then all of a sudden, we got into the two back and started going downhill, power running game. We started having making some, some, get, making some, having some success. Then we got away from that. Mm -hmm. And every game that we played and we run the ball downhill, we had success. But then once we got away from it, that's when things started going wrong. Even in the Michigan game. The Michigan game was close. 
Yeah, it was 31-17. It was uh, close to the net. For, four was, minutes left I in the third the, quarter. I think Nebraska was winning at halftime. No, they, were, they were just down seven. And then all, then all of a sudden, we get, they, yeah, the three the, special the, teams. The special team, we got to stick. We got to figure out. Yeah, moving the chains is okay. Chain. It may not be sexy for Coach Beck. That's, that's the, move the chains. Move the chains. Move the chains. Keep the defense off the field. Because we'll we saw that the, the least amount of time defense on the field, the better they play. Yeah, they're, but they're, but the more they're on the field, the worse they play. Yeah. You're watching Tommy Frazier's X's and O's. I'm Jimmy Shield. And one incident which, you know, kind of was a bummer for all of us Husker fans, um, wanting Alfonso Denner to end his no, end his career on a high note. Mm-hmm. Uh, real quick, your comment on his ejection. Well, well I thought, I thought you know, it was one of those deals where sh- should they have been ejected? No, I thought maybe they should have got a personal foul penalty and been, and been offset. And because really, what, what, no harm, no foul to me. Both guys, three punches, you know, Denner did start the whole you know, melee, but... Oh, it takes two. It takes two. But he, he started. He threw the first. Other guy retaliated and go back. I feel it, 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 it's a bowl game. Both guys are very competitive. Mm-hmm. Personal foul penalties. I don't think either guy should have been ejected. That, that's the one. But the referee had to make a call. They made a call. and Maybe they had kind of lost control and they hadn't kept it under wraps enough. But reffing's a tough job. I've done it in sports. My only, my only takeaway from it was if people want to be too critical of Dennard was, you know, I know it was a bowl game. But... And to me, bowl games, that's why you always hear announcers say, hey, it's a bowl game. Go ahead and go for it. Go ahead and try it. I don't think either guy would have thrown down in a regular season game. Whereas sometimes in a bowl game, your level of tolerance to snapping is a little lower. Because this wasn't a national championship or a BCS game. No, I think think the problem is you play play a team that you hadn't faced in years or ever faced. And so now it's... it's, They talk down south. It's it's, it's pride. It's it's comfort. pride. And say this guy, oh, I'm the number one, the number one a first round draft pick. I'm a first round draft yeah. pick. I'm gonna get the best of you. It's that kind of stuff. And the referees should have known that going to the game that these two guys, because yeah. they talked about it all week. Like he's not gonna have a big game, or I'm gonna have a big game. Yeah. It started early in the game, and the referees should have took control of it. Never game, did, and they never did. And but throw him out. You know, I, I felt this. Yeah, no, it was no harm. No, just... It was no harm, no foul into my book. No, 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 nothing really happened. That Warner, both guys been thrown out. Personal foul, um, yeah, all exactly. setting, play, play football. Have a suspension or a penalty oh, before yes. the expulsion kind yes. of set thing. It's just like, boom, you went to expulsion out of, out of nowhere. Right. But that was one thing from the game maybe uh, we weren't expecting to see. And as, you know, as Denner came back for his senior year and everything, you just wanted to kind of him to go out, of, you know, even in a loss, but to go but out. I, but I, the I don't think it's going to hurt his, his no, stats in that field. Oh, because no. what, what that showed him that, well, he, I mean, he actually played well. Oh, he did. You, you, you take that. He got burned twice. Burned, burned once, actually once in that long touchdown pass. Other than that, he was right there. Yeah, all the hell Mary was the hell Mary. That, that's that can happen. I that you, you yeah. win some, you lose some. But the, the one play that he got beat on, hey, he he, he fought, chased the guy down. He chased the guy down, made the tap, and then they missed the field goal. So. Yeah, so I mean, so that, oh, I don't think it hurt him at all. I just no. meant in terms of you know you want the best for him, and I think you know again, boy, if this was a regular season game. He doesn't. But well, then you he gotta learn how to control on. your temper too. That's that's yeah. that's big. But it all stuff happens when when your head coach starts losing his cool. That's then, another, they, yeah. then it starts trickling down to the players. Then the players so they they uh, I'm going. That's another issue. Yes. You know. So and it happens every time. You notice that anytime both star really losing his cool, then the play starts trickling down to the team. That's when they start losing their cool. The meltdown. The meltdown. That's what. And that's what happened. That the it's a that, fine line. It's yes. a fine line. So I look at it this way. It it happened. Move on. Yeah. But what you mentioned is one of the main, one of the themes of the year, Bo's um, sideline demeanor. Sometimes it fires the team up, sometimes maybe not. And on our wrap-up show next week, that's one of the uh, ish- things we'll be talking about, mm-hmm. along with uh, first-year coaches. Um, besides, we'll talk about Coach Raymond, who had a lot of young players, a young coach. But could we see, uh, hopefully we see a bounce from year one to year two there, just like with Coach Beck. Right. All in all, a nine and four season. We'll break it all down. First year in the Big Ten, and kind of uh, we'll kind of look forward to at the second year in the Big Ten. Uh, I'm Jimmy Shield, joined by Tommy Frazier, and we'll catch you next week on Tommy Frazier's X's and O's.